Good evening, I'm Pallavi Ghosh. First, a check of all the stories from India and abroad as well. But the big story which broke a short while back, the opposition parties met earlier today. They've chosen veteran Congress leader Margaret Alva as the opposition's combined vice presidential candidate. She's from Karnataka, she's been a governor of Rajasthan and she's one of the senior most members of the Congress party. She also has vast administrative experience as well as being a minister in the central government. So it's going to be Dhankar versus Margaret Alva as far as the vice presidential polls are concerned. But that's as far as the opposition goes. Meanwhile, the NDA too picked up the West Bengal governor Jagdeep Dhankar as their vice presidential candidate. He has a public service career spanning three decades. Jagdeep Dhankar has also currently served as the governor of Bengal and his post uh, he has held since 2019 and by the BJP he calls him Kisan Putra and the People's Governor. Sabhi namu par gaur karne ke baad hum sab log aur Bharatiya Janata Party ki sansadiya board is nishkarsh par pahunchi hai ki uprashtrapati pad ke liye Bharatiya Janata Party और एनडीए के प्रत्याशी के रूप में हमारे किसान पुत्र श्री जगदीप धनकर जी को हम उपराष्ट्रपति पद के लिए अपना प्रत्याशी के रूप में घोषित करते हैं धनकर जी को हार्दिक बधाई और साथ ही में भारतीय जनता पार्टी को बधाई बहुत अच्छा निर्णय है और जो वस्तु स्थिति है उसको ध्यान में रखते हुए और खास तौर पे राजस्थान का नेतृत्व कर रहे हो करेंगे वो राज्यसभा में तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोस्ट पे राजस्थान के किसी व्यक्ति को बिठाना अपने आप में बहुत बड़े सम्मान का विषय है Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has already extended support from his party's behalf to the NDA's vice presidential candidate Jagdeep Dhankar. BJP has already named West Bengal governor, as we pointed out, uh, as the uh, candidate. And uh, Dhankar, in fact, is a Jat leader from Rajasthan. And he this announcement was made late last evening. RJD leader Tejasvi Yadav has criticized the NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu. He said that Rashtrapati Bhavan needs a president and not a statue and that people have never heard her say anything. And this has stoked a lot of controversy. <laughs> लेकिन जो सत्ता पक्ष से जो उम्मीदवार दी गई हालांकि छोटी मुंह बड़ी बात बोलनी नहीं चाहिए लेकिन हमने कभी नहीं सुना और हमको नहीं लगता कि आप लोगों ने भी उनकी आवाज को सुना हो एक भी प्रेस वार्ता जब से उम्मीदवार बनी है एक भी प्रेस वार्ता नहीं किया है Meanwhile, the opposition's presidential candidate, Yashwan Sinha, has written a letter to all the members ahead of the polls tomorrow. He has yet again attacked the NDA presidential candidate, saying that she's just going to be a rubber stamp who's going to protect the Prime Minister. Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, has said that there used to be mutual respect between the government and the opposition earlier, but the opposition's pace is now diminishing. A strong parliamentary democracy demands strengthening the opposition as well, is what he said. He added that laws were now being passed with a detailed deliberation and scrutiny. The accountability forms the core principle of democracy. There used to be a lot of mutual respect between the government and the opposition. Unfortunately, the space for opposition is diminishing. We are witnessing laws being passed without detailed deliberation and scrutiny. Instead of engaging in a meaningful, meaningful debates for furthering democracy, Politics has become autonomous. Chief Justice of India N.V. Nabanna on Saturday called for steps to address the grave issue of the high number of under-trial prisoners which is affecting the criminal justice system. N.V. Ramana said that there is a need to question the procedures which lead to prolonged incarceration without any trial. And out of 6 lakh prisoners in the country, nearly 80% are under-trial prisoners and lamented that in the criminal justice system, the process is a punishment. A grave issue affecting our criminal justice system is the high population of under trials in our prisons. 
out of 6.10 lakhs prisoners in India, around 80% are under trial prisoners. Efforts like the release UTRC at 75 brings back the spotlight on the necessity of continuously reviewing the existing under trials for their faster release. Section 144 has been imposed after violence erupted during a protest against the death by suicide of a girl in a school premises. The 12th standard girl allegedly died after she alleged torture by teachers. According to police officials, there was a note written by the girl in which it was alleged that two teachers from the school tortured her, forcing them to study all the time. The school girl died under the natural situations and we arrested a case and we are investigating and a group, small group of people came for protest so therefore we made a leverage arrangement and instead of protesting they started uh, attacking the school and it is safeguard the school only. We have now rushed extra police officers and policemen there. Around 100 men, uh, 500 people are uh, going there to bring the situation under control. Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin tweeted to say that the developments in Kalakulchi are concerning and he also assured that the guilty would be punished. This has come after a 12th standard girl, as we just mentioned, had allegedly died by suicide after torture by her teacher. And politics is full on after DMK MP has given a communal colour to Bhumi Poojan for a road project in the state. DMK's S. Senthil Kumar has said that representatives of all religions should be invited to offer prayers for any such event. Senthil Kumar asked why there was no church or priest or an imam present during this government period. Well, the government held an all-party meeting to formulate a strategy to maximise the productivity of the House along with addressing the concerns of the opposition. At the meeting, all opposition parties raised issues of price rise, unparliamentary words, controversy and also a demand for withdrawal of the Agnipath recruitment scheme. Inflation ka mudda hai, price rise ka bhi hai, uske saath Agnipath ka mudda hai, uske baad jo federal structure स्टेट स्टेट के जो हकूक छीन ले रहे हैं उसका है कम से कम 14 मुद्दे वहां पर रखा गए उनका कोई उसको उत्तर नहीं आया सिर्फ उन्होंने सुना और चले गए दे आर ट्राइंग टू बी लिटिल द इमेज ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट आई कंडेम द एटीट्यूड ऑफ द अपोजिशन पार्टीज एंड आई वांट टू एम्पली क्लेरिफाई that it depends on the situation and circumstances in which they are speaking and on that basis speaker will decide and these phrases which are brought out these have been brought out by the speaker and government has nothing to do on that police has dug deep into the bihar terror plot and has further cracked a whip on the pfi radicalization and involvement of Ghazvi A. Hind in the case. As many as five people have been arrested, a special investigation team is conducting raids in different districts of the state. Bihar police has got a 48-hour remand of accused Arman Malik, who is the key link in the case, and Atahar Parvez. Their links, we have established until now, are transnational. Hai. Technical is our information. We are information ko hum ground pe verify on the ground. और रेट्स भी चल रहे हैं कुछ जो जीरोइंग हुई है उस पे रेट्स भी चल रहे हैं और हमें पूरा विश्वास है जो स्पेशल एसआईटी काम कर रही है उस पे वो बहुत जल्द ही और लोगों को गिरफ्तार करेगी कि हमारी पूछताछ के लिए पुलिस रिमांड पे पूछताछ के लिए बहुत ही विशेषीकृत टीम बनाई गई है और जो जैसे जैसे हमारे पास उनके जवाब मिलेंगे उसको वेरीफाई करने के लिए ग्राउंड पर हमारी स्पेशल टीम्स अलग अलग डिस्ट्रिक्स में और अलग स्टेट्स में कैंप किए हैं a Pakistani drone was spotted in the Dhinda area of Patan Court at the Punjab international border. 46 rounds were fired at the Pakistani drone. This drone is said to have gone back. Forces have also launched searches in the area. In fact, another drone from Pakistan was spotted in the Manguchak area of the Samba international border. It was flying from Chachwal to Manguchak area of Samba. Drone was spotted for around 15 minutes at a height of 300 meters. Security forces have also conducted a search. When Indigo Sharjah Hyderabad flight was diverted to Karachi in Pakistan after a pilot reported technical snag in the aircraft which is now being examined at the airport. Airlines plans to send another aircraft to Karachi and this is the second Indian airline to make a landing in Karachi 
in two weeks. China and India are currently holding the 16th round of core commander talks at Moldo. The talks have begun on the Indian side at Shushul Moldo meeting point. 16th round of talks comes as a part of efforts by both the nations to take forward the stalled process of disengagement and de-escalation in eastern Ladakh. Amarnath Yatra has resumed from both the sides of Baltal and Pahalgam base camp after it was suspended yesterday due to bad weather. Earlier, the Amarnath Yatra was partially suspended after a cloudburst incident which has killed 16 people. Telangana Rashtra Samiti MLC K. Kavita participated in the Bonalu festival at the Mahakali temple in Secunderabad. The MLC, along with scores of women, walked through the temple, offered bonam and prayers. festival that was cancelled due to the pandemic two years back has restarted. Some states are witnessing a rainfall deficit. Gujarat is severely flooded. Water level in Tapi River has already crossed the critical mark in Surat. Meanwhile, several areas in Navsari districts remain inundated. A 132 teams in Navsari have reached for the survey while NDRF continues its rescue operations. The Indian Navy helicopters have continued the relief operations in Iluru district in Andhra Pradesh, which remain cut off due to massive floods after the Godavari River turned ferocious. Over 20 lakh people in six districts of Andhra Pradesh are affected due to floods in the river. Kodavri's flow has breached a 25 lakh Qsex mark after 16 years. Amid incessant rainfall in Uttarakhand, landslides have been reported in many areas. Part of the mountain of the Badrinath Rishikesh National Highway collapsed due to rain and landslides in Rudraprayag yesterday. There was no damage, however, to any vehicle during the period, but the traffic has been disrupted. Amid heavy rainfall in Kerala, shutters of the Malampura Dam in Palakar district was reopened. Four shutters, 30 centimetres each, were opened. Water logging was reported in some areas. People on the banks of the Malakapura, Kalapatui, Pudra have been asked to stay vigilant. As heavy rains lash Karnataka, most of the reservoirs have been filled in the Kali River region. Eight gates of the Kadra reservoir have been opened. 40 cusics of water has been released. As a result, the low-lying villages are completely inundated. Surrounding road connectivity is cut off. Villagers have been shifted to safer areas. A video has gone viral in Rajasthan in which a district collector's car is submerged under a bridge in Ganganagar in the state. Local people rush to rescue. With heavy rain in Telangana, the Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao travelled in a bus to visit the flood-affected areas participated in a review meeting on the Godavari floods at the Bhadrachalam today. Telangana government is concerned about the outbreak of the communicable diseases in the flood-affected areas, especially in and around submerged places of Godavari. Telangana... Yeah. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao, while interacting with the media, said that cloudbursts in Telangana could be due to a foreign conspiracy. He also announced financial assistance of 10,000 rupees, 20 kgs of rice per family who have been affected by the floods. Chief Minister observed that the Godavari River near the Bhadrachal of Karakatta and talked to the victims of the flood. A major fire broke out at a vegetable market under the Nihalganj police station in Dholpur district of Rajasthan. More than a dozen shops have been burned to ashes. Now, after getting this information, several fire tenders reached the spot. However, the cause of the fire is yet to be known. Till now, there are no reports of any casualties so far. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has written another letter to the Prime Minister urging the centre to give clearance for his visit to Singapore for the World Cities Summit. Now, in his letter, the Delhi Chief Minister alleged that it is against the interest of the country to stop a Chief Minister from visiting an important event. Invitation is a matter of pride and honour for the country. Mukhyamantri ke adhikaro ka bhi hanan hai aur sanghiya dhanche par bhi pradhar hai ki ek mukhyamantri ko aap Singapore ke andar ho rahi World City Sammelan mein jane ki ijajat nahi de rahe. Kyun? Kyunki Modi ji ka farji model hai, Kejri Wal ka asli model hai, is liye aap us model se darte hai, Kejri Wal se dar rahe hai ki uski charcha dunia ke forum pe na honne paaye. The Indian Air Force Chief Vivek Ram Chaudhary has said that the induction program of S-400 air defense system is going on as per schedule and that the first firing unit has been inducted. He also mentioned that the second unit is also in the process of getting inducted. The Indian Air Force Chief added that the delivery schedule is on time and by next year all deliveries will be completed. 
The induction program of the S-400 is going on as per schedule. The first firing unit has been inducted and it has been deployed as per our operational plans. The second unit is also in the process of getting inducted. So the delivery schedules are on time and uh, we are hopeful that by the end of next year all the deliveries will be completed. Terrorists have attacked a security personnel in the Gangu area of Pulwama in southern Kashmir. One assistant sub-inspector or CRPF has succumbed. The area has been cordoned off to nab the attackers. A group of at least 15 assailants allegedly attacked a 15-year-old boy inside the emergency ward of a civil hospital in Ludhiana with sharp-edged weapon killing him. According to FIR, the incident occurred in the presence of doctors, nurses and patients when a group of assailants carrying swords and axes in their hands attacked this unit. A crude bomb blast has killed two people and has left one injured in Manikchak area of Malda. The injured person has been taken to a hospital. Huge police force has already been deployed in the area and a bomb disposal, disposal squad is already rushing to the spot. Well, there's a row of protest in Karnataka. The CFI Girls Conference in Mangalore staged a protest against the harassment of Muslim girls and discrimination according to their attire. Hundreds of girls took part at the town hall conference in Mang Mangalore and shouted slogans demanding the end to the saffronization at educational institutions. Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Rao has hit out at the Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde, Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadavis over a delay in cabinet expansion. Sanjay Rao added that his government, this government is illegal, this faction doesn't have the power to rewrite history. Rao has also demanded that presidential rule be imposed in the state. Well, in a milestone achievement, India has completed 200 crore vaccinations 18 months after the vaccinations began. With this, 96% of the country's population has received the first dose of the COVID vaccine, while 87% have both the doses. Today, India has created history. It has administered more than 200 crores of vaccine to its people. So it's a great achievement for Bihar as well. Uh, over 14 crore vaccines have been administered so far. Uh, here we have some beneficiaries who have been taking uh, vaccines. So India is a growing country. We want to take 200 crore. We want to take the whole country and take this vaccine and keep it safe. India recorded over 20,000 cases and 49 deaths in the last 24 hours. The active cases comprise 0.33% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate was recorded at 98.47%. An increase of 2,689 cases has been recorded in an active COVID-19 caseload within a span of 24 hours. The IMA, the Indian Medical Association, has written a letter to the Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman requesting a grant and exemption in GST for healthcare services. The letter says the decision is unfortunate and unfair to the people of the country and healthcare costs will be increased. ICSC Class 10 exam results 2022 is going to be declared later today. Once announced, the students will be able to check their scorecards on the ICSC website. Lacks of students are competing for these results. India and Indonesia have signed an MOU on the sidelines of the G20 meeting to cooperate on a number of issues including payment systems and to combat terror financing. MOU is going to be implemented through a policy dialogue and joint work.